Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals. And in today's video, we are taking a, another look at Alchemist. This time we're actually taking a look at it. We're playing around with it ourselves. Yeah, we got a version now. <laughs> yeah. So we've had a little bit of time with this just to play around and figure out, you know, the material creation. And that's what we're going to walk you through today. But first off, just want to mention, we're currently having a GDC sale on all Flip Normals products. They're all 25% off. So make sure to head over to the marketplace and, you know, pick something up. Link in the description. So first off, uh, I just want to quickly talk about Substance Share. This is primarily where I've been sourcing materials from. It's just a super great resource and it's all free. So there's like a thousand materials that you can just grab and then just play around with in Alchemist. So I would definitely recommend that you check that out. Okay, so first off, uh, when you open Alchemist, you're, you're going to be presented with just the standard base materials. We're not actually going to be using any of those, even though they are fine. Um, I created a folder here, you can just create a folder there called Substance Share, and then I just imported three materials that I downloaded from Substance Share. One is like cliff rock, some sand, and some moss. So change the crate tab and then just drag out your material. So here we have a nice looking rock material that we are gonna change. So we're gonna we're gonna create this sand dune rock looking thing and then try to modify it. So first of all Take your rock thing here. I don't like the colors of this. Um, it doesn't really fit for what I want to do. So I'm going to add a color variation uh, filter to it. And then we can start playing around with the colors. By default, you have 10 colors assigned, which I think is too much. So I'm going to take it down to three. So to start with, I just pick random colors that are just distinct so I can see what does each color do. So the first one here, that's the red one. That's going to be the dominant color. Um, I'm gonna try to make that into more of a brown, dark, but like still warm, like a warm color. Then we have our little purple that's like in the crevices there. So maybe we want that to be, that could be like a bluish color, but then a little darker than that. And then the green one is the top one. I like the idea of like a little blue accent, uh, but still, uh, dark so it's not like super dominant and this is why we chose pretty extreme colors in the beginning because it was a lot easier to actually see where they were yeah yeah because if you just pick pick the colors that you want from the get-go it can be a little tricky to actually figure out what color does what okay there you go so now we have something kind of lava rock naturalistic ish looking mm -hmm. um, if you want to change any of this you can always go to your uh, settings for stuff like change your output or the environment. I just pick this Aragon stairs because it looked nice for what I wanted to do. Um, you've got some shader adjustment here for, for the displacement quality as well as shadows and the tessellation that, that goes on. So after the color variation here, um, I want to try and like what we talked about before Henning and I was like, okay, maybe this is like, maybe it came from space. So maybe it was like a meteor or something. Maybe it was a mine. So there's like, uh, it's like a very iron heavy rock. Luckily, Alchemist has a rust filter. <laughs> so we just apply this rust filter and then see what we get. So this just goes like on top. I think it's like kind of like a curvature blend um, that just goes on top of uh, whatever you have. And then you can start playing around with the spread of the rust and the color as well. Like if you change the age here, it becomes more vibrant and stuff. So try to integrate it just a little bit. One thing that is, that's really cool is this um, varnish damage scale. It kind of make like, so like it's been flaking off all the way out here, which I think looks pretty cool. And you can always increase or decrease this. If like on the fly, if you decide, okay, I want more or less rust. It's pretty nice. Let's see. Cool. All right. That's pretty cool. We could just end it there. Now we have our rock material. Mm. <laughs> so uh, let's get our little palette back. Where is it? There you go. And I just want to add the sand now. So let's see what that looks like. So the sand is going to integrate. So this is the first blend material that we're using. So the sand is going to integrate from the bottom and up. That's just uh, this option here you can also do from the top so the sand is the dominant one but we want to add it from 
like the bottom. So it's kind of like sand has been been blowing in on on top of this rock and then just settling here in the crevices. And I assume that this here uses then the height information yeah. for this. Yeah, because it's all like live uh, yeah. decimated, which is pretty cool. So, like for some of these materials, sometimes when you blend it, it can be a little tricky to actually see what's going on. So, I'll just get rid of this. Whoa. <coughs> and then we can adjust this sand material. So, the sand material was also just from Substance Share. So, we'll just crank up some of these settings to just make this look a little more regular. Let's see. And I think it's a pretty cool material because we've got like this stuff that collects in between the little rib ridges and there's like small clumps of sand as well. You can add some wind intensity hmm. to the sand. Sand clumps, there we go. Let's spread less. Control over the AO. So all of these parameters are here because uh, of the, this was the designer material that uh, whoever created this, I can't remember what his name was. So, you know, it's going to vary based on on the material that you get and where you get it from and who's made it and, and what they've made available to you, basically. So, let's see. You can always, from I think for almost all, for all materials, you have the seed value that you can just change if you want to just mix it up a little bit, which I think... Like sometimes you're like, oh, okay, this is kind of cool. It's almost there, but I just want to tweak it just a tiny bit. Okay, so something like that. And then we'll throw on all the materials again, have a compute. And then now we have something that's just like a tiny bit more irregular. And then because this is a blend material now, we can play with the height offset. So this, these parameters here, the blend parameters are unique to whatever uh, like material you then put on top of other materials. So we can have the sand go up a little higher and then show through a little more. But now we're running into the issue, I think, that it's we're getting too much of the striation from from the sand. So if we go and we can add an adjustment layer here. So an adjustment layer just has a bunch of different generic adjustment parameters. And because this is all layer based, this is gonna affect whatever is below it. So I just wanna play around with the cliff rock here for a second. So Let's say the spec, like say you didn't like the spec of this. You can go into reflection and then just drop it all the way down or you want to make it super wet, you could do that as well. So this is just like a generic uh, procedural thing that, that Alchemist can just throw on top. If, if you don't like how the base material looks, for example. So for this, I think we're just going to be playing around with the height a little bit. Let's see. So this value, by default, this value here, this is a global value that's set to 0.2. So I'll just have that there. Just notice it was a little low. I absolutely love that you can do this. You can, that you have a real time displacement like this. Yeah. So good. So, yeah, so I, I just want to get the sort of like um, a feel of, of the rocks are more, they stick out a little more. Like before, if you just take down the sharp elevation, it's, it's a little too smooth. So I'll just have them stick out a little, and then let's see. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. Go back to our sand material here, and then what you can do is, so I don't know if this will be good for all materials, but like the blend opacity, uh, probably not for sand because it, it's an actual opacity slider. Um, but maybe, maybe you have like a more desaturated look, but for this, we're just gonna crank it all the way up. Another cool thing is that for blend materials, you can match the color of whatever's underneath. So you could have this, like, maybe this is like glass. That's so cool, it looks like sand now. Yeah. Or like uh, like one of this, like a really emotional sequence from a movie where <laughs> all the characters die, yeah. sand turns white. I haven't quite figured out this top material scale. Like what it seems to do is just make the material shitty. <laughs> uh, like it's yeah I like I feel like it makes okay for the sand one here okay that totally makes sense but I'll show you what I mean when we put on the uh, the moss in a bit like it it just scales the material but it doesn't preserve the detail I think maybe that's because like in order like if you wanted to scale up and preserve the detail you would need like higher risk map or something 
by default, I think I'm working on a 2K map. So maybe if you had like a 4 or 8K map, that would look better. But yeah, so you can just, you know, you can tweak that to your to your heart's content. And a friend of mine pointed out that maybe this looks like a chocolate cake with like some, some cheese gravy or something. <laughs> so, I mean, that could be that as well. You know, use your imagination there. So to add a little more, let's call it realism into this kind of sci-fi fantasy look stuff here. Um, I'm going to find the gravel generator. <laughs> I um, love that you have this. <laughs> of course you have a gr gr gravel generator. <laughs> it's like the most substance like yeah. thing you can think of. We, I think we need another term like substance cowboy now. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that is actually really annoying that I just noticed with your with a tablet, you can only zoom in until here. But with your scroll wheel on the mouse, you can zoom in hmm. way further. Okay. That sounds a little bit like a bug. That's pretty weird. Yeah. Also, if you're using this on a Mac, the text is going to be super broken everywhere. So mm. maybe stick to Windows for now. So just for the gravel stuff, I just want to like the way I'm thinking about it. So this is like wind blown sand, right? And maybe in so not the peaks here, that's where we have the most sand, obviously, but in the little ridges here, that's maybe where you would have some some of these smaller stones being revealed. So but not a lot because it looks stupid like that. So we just have a little bit and then what we can do is just change the size of this and match it to the base material a little more just so they don't stick out as much and actually I'm just going to make them closer to the original. I love that there is a gravel generator. Of course there is. <laughs> That's a really cool thing about this whole software is that you, you can use you can use the entire substance ecosystem for it. So if there is a super cool generator made in designer, you can just chuck it in here. Yeah. Okay, something like that. And then, I mean, there's so many different, you know, uh, parameters, scattering volumes, random masking, let's increase that to have less of them, less height. And this one was really cool, the height depth. So you can sort of like, you can embed it further into the, into the sand. Okay, so now we just have a little more variation in terms of, of the sand, just so it's not just regular boring sand. Just get let it recompute everything. I found sometimes when you let it recompute again, like the height, yeah, so exactly like this. The height gets kind of messed up. Mm. Um, I would assume this is a bug and... Uh, it is still in beta. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, like it's it's it totally makes sense that you have, that is not perfectly refined that there are bugs here. So what we can do is go in and just tweak the height of the sand, I guess. There we go. So what you gonna a cool feature here I like is the contrast. If you want it super sharp, like you don't hmm. want anything to sort of like blend over, uh, like this would be probably a little more realistic for sand, but let's pretend we're making it for a game or something. Uh, then we probably want like a little bit of sand spilling over just to, so it doesn't look as hard a little, little more there we go okay so now we have some just like a small indication of some gravel or pebble there you can always increase the quantity if we want a little more variation Pretty cool and then the next thing i want to try is the cool little moss here so we'll just drag this onto the material and then we've destroyed everything <laughs> <laughs> so uh, again, this is just a regular blend material, but I just want to change the order a little bit. So I want the moss to grow on top of, uh, of the rocks as well as the rust. So right now it's blending from the bottom. The way that the rust works is that, I, well, I think it's a curvature blend. So you can change that here as well for the moss. So now it's just a straight curvature blend, which grows like from the top to the bottom change this from edge to cavity. So now it grows in all the cavities instead, which can give us a pretty cool look. And then just uh, with the balance here, you can increase it so you have more or decrease it so you have less. So just like just like a subtle thing where there's like some moss growing in there. You can always change the, uh, the curvature filter. I found that if you combine the smooth and classic, it just becomes a little more sharp uh, if you want it like super subtle. But for this example, we're just gonna stick with the curvature smooth. But I'm really just impressed with what you can do. 
you know, it's just, it's so quick and you can play around and modify the materials and, and then you're like, you have a completely new material that doesn't look like your base materials I am honestly so impressed by this. I mean, I've been, I've been working as a texture artist for years now and working as a texture artist is always, it was always kind of shitty in a way because, <laughs> you know, you had to always just grade images. If you had sand, now you, you had to find an image of sand and grade it properly and now you had to paint manual masks and all these kind of things. But in particularly in the in the substance ecosystem, you can you don't spend time you don't spend so much time you know doing these like manual labor tasks, no. but you can spend more time being creative. And for to spend my time as a texture artist on creating photos feels kind of like a waste of time. You want to spend <laughs> me for my artistic vision. Yeah. And something like this is just amazing. Yeah, for me it's also like I. I played around with designer for a while and got into it, but like it's a really, I think it's a hardcore software to get into it and I've forgotten everything again, you know, all that stuff is just gone. But this like alchemist took me maybe like 10 minutes or so to like, <laughs> to like kind of pick up just because it's very, very simple and very, very intuitive. I like, I know that people are going to talk about um, Mixer as well and like how uh, the UI looks 100% stolen from Mixer <laughs> and what we're doing now is like 100% stolen from Mixer and yeah, yeah, I would agree. Um, but um, just from playing around with both softwares, is that is that plural? Softwares or software? I think it's software. Let's stick with that. Um, I would say that, that Alchemist just seems like a more powerful package. I think the cool thing about Mixer is that obviously you have the whole point system that's all integrated and you can just import directly from from their library and stuff but it does come with more of a price tag and they have less filters right now but maybe maybe they'll adjust that yeah and also a quick uh, quick sell also had that you know you have the mega scans which yeah, are yeah. just insanely exactly. high quality so that's that's another i would say maybe advantage but then again you have substance um source where you also have exactly. scan data there so i think it's just good to have these competitors um so they can you know push each other and they're also both fairly early on. You yeah, know, they're both in beta. <laughs> both in beta. So, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see where they, where they keep on going. And whenever I see a tool like Alchemist, I'm not judging it based on where it's currently at. No. I'm judging it based on the potential you have. And the potential I'm seeing here is that it really means that you can be spend your time being creative and make awesome materials instead of all the menial tasks, like I said, grading photos. Because... <laughs> I really, really hope that that age is over now <laughs> and yeah. we can start having fun with texturing. That would be really nice. I would really like that. So just here to round off this uh, material, I'm going to do the most substance thing you can do, which is add water to it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> because uh, why not? Okay, so now our desert was flooded. Uh, which is great, but no maybe, survivors. <laughs> maybe it's a little too flooded. I just love playing around with um, with the water because it, it sort of it preserves everything that's underneath. So like if you look at like if you look at the moss or something like right there and you play with the water level, it preserves the color and preserves the sort of like illusion of it still being there, which I think is pretty cool. Honestly it feels like we're in a SIGGRAPH demo now when you're doing this kind of stuff. This is like <laughs> because it's real time. Yeah, right? also this this kind of like water filter is always one of these tools which is always five years ahead. Yeah. You can, you can never actually play with it. It's always some kind of <laughs> shitty demo where they're they're just doing it in this weird interface. But the fact that we can actually do this is yeah. is honestly amazing to me. So maybe a little more water, tiny bit, something like that. Because you know it needs to be needs to be a true substance material. Mm. And then we have a flooded kind of flooded desert like asteroid material where some moss grew because maybe there's a little bit of moisture. Maybe it gets flooded a lot or something. I don't know. It rains in only these spots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the cool thing is that if... Okay, let's say we want to do some variation on this. If we didn't want our sand in there anymore. We can just disable the sand and boom. Now we have, I don't know, like Frodo from Lord of the Rings is going through Mordor or something. The good thing about this as well is, when, particularly when dealing with rocks, is it's almost impossible to determine scale. If you don't have a tree or a leaf or something in it, like this here could be like the dead marshes by itself. It could be like an area shot yeah. or it could be really close up. And it's it's almost impossible to tell. Oh, so let's let it compute this. So like if you just were to use this, you know, right now it's, it's maybe a little crazy. So um, I think maybe the easiest is to just go into the displacement amplitude, just the global one. Just bring it down a little bit or something. And then you have this disgusting looking swamp <laughs> here. You can always make it more disgusting, like make the water a little 
darker or maybe you want to raise the water level a little bit have it really swampy so it just rained a lot frodo would not be happy here <laughs> <laughs> and then change it to a sphere or something so you know then you've got a pretty cool looking material here and what you can always do is you raise the water level completely and now you've destroyed your material <laughs> so that's always nice <laughs> Yeah, I feel this is one of these, you know, we could just keep on going on forever with this. Yeah. Because, you know, just like like Warren was doing here, enabling like a, like a, just one water filter completely changes the look for it. Yeah. And this is one of the really cool things about this. Uh, enable or disable one parameter and you can have a completely different material. Yeah, so I think, I mean, it's pretty, pretty crazy what you can do in not a lot of time. And, you know... We're, I, we're definitely going to be doing more videos like this. And I want to do one where we also import just a bitmap where we don't use any pre made stuff. We only use the bitmaps and then we use the filters that are provided within in Alchemist. So uh, yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a comment down below, like and subscribe and check out our GDC sale, 25% off on the Flip Numbers Marketplace currently. Make sure to turn on notifications if you want to be notified every time we put out a new video. Thanks for watching. Thanks guys. <laughs>